Well, guys, you spoke and they listened. Wildwood has taken their best destination trailer I've ever seen and cranked it up even further based on your input, and I think you're going to love it. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Bishop's RV down here at Forest River today getting my very first sneak peek look at the new 44 view. They took last year's 42 view, which still exists by the way, but they applied so much feedback that you folks left on videos like this and created this new model and I think it is an absolute winner. So what they did here is they, uh, some of the tweaks and revisions. A lot of people said, man, the 42 view, it has all the sleeping capacity, like you have double lofts plus a private bedroom, but you've only got one bathroom and that bathroom is 45 feet across the RV all the way uh, away from the, the front bedroom. So the primary owners of the RV, every time you want to use the bathroom at night, you got to walk 45 feet. Well, they said, that's, that's silly. We're going to listen to you. And they added a half bath near the front of the RV now so that everyone has a bathroom close to them no matter where you're sleeping. They also tweaked the rear loft to make it uh, uh, basically an elevated like a uh, studio queen bedroom if you want to think of it that way. Um, so it's good for more than just bunk spaces. They've also tweaked the front loft a little bit and they went to triple axle instead of double for better carrying capacity and better stability. Because if you think about this RV, the driver's side of it is way heavier than the passenger side. And they wanted to bulk up a little bit there to make sure that everything just made sense and balanced out a little bit better. Along with that, they've also revised the kitchen and I like this kitchen a lot. Um, it, when you're like staring straight it like the microwave and stove and stuff there's far more symmetry you've got counter space on both sides of it now it's far more friendly to right-handed folks than the 42 view was and it just it makes so much more sense to me but you still have that unprecedented amount of campsite window coverage uh, you've got just the the expansive wide body extra tall nature of this thing uh, you've got standard dual air conditioners now standard RV airflow system optional thermal package you can apply to this to go up another step uh, they uh, have actually done everything they could to try to make this as like multi-climate friendly as possible because with all the big windows, hot sunny climates could be an issue. So they're actively taking measures to try to combat that while still giving you just this ultra fun thing. Let's get inside because uh, I'm really excited to go through this one with you. And it's funny, I had the same problem in the 42 view last year. Here's this 44. I don't know where to begin because there's a lot of really cool stuff to cover. So where we're standing right now is basically the um, the, the rear loft bedroom uh, and uh, bathroom, but this has two entry doors. So this is what it might look like if you're popping in real quick to use, I don't know, the, the back bathroom. What's, what's interesting about this is, is they didn't really give up much. They just kind of shifted things around intelligently. They had to move the refrigerator because that's now a half bathroom. But when they did that, when they revised the kitchen, What's really cool here is they gave it symmetry that it lacked before. Uh, it had, you know, the same big, like, you know, four burner, almost residential style insignia oven, but it was like smashed right up against the wall. And now you've got counter space on both sides. Now it's not perfectly symmetrical, obviously, but you get the idea. We've got cabinets and counter space on both sides of the stove and the microwave now. And one of the cool things about this, um, it's not a laminated wall RV in the traditional sense. It's technically a hybrid style of construction where it's uh, a laminated uh, fiberglass atop a stick-built structure. And what that means is that they can run power outlets in the walls where they make the most sense. Um, this, I haven't measured it out. I'm going to guess this has, I don't know, 12 to 15 uh, linear feet of counter space. Uh, it, it's got a lot. It does have a little bit of a, a kitchen toast stubber, and they are using some floor heat uh, ducting in these. And if those are problems for you, I totally get it. I respect it. That's why I went out of my way to point out stuff like that so that you could see what we're actually looking at right here. Uh, because I want you to, to, to really get what I call the real deal of Vander Holyfield uh, on this whole sucker. And we're going to come back up front in a minute and take a look at the, uh, you know, the, the front loft, uh, almost, you know, bunk area gaming room, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, as well as the front bedroom out there. But I, I think we need to get dug into these, uh, all the window coverage on this, because that is the thing this RV does better than anything else, with the only sole exception being its uh, evil twin, the 42 view, which we're actually looking at out the window over here, coincidentally enough. 
the the campsite window coverage on this is absolutely incredible. Now let's talk about some concerns that some folks have uh, voiced on my videos on these. A lot of folks are gonna say, man, it's gonna be really hard to heat and cool that sucker with all those windows. Because the fact is windows have an R value of less than one. Um, there's not a whole lot going on there. So it's a valid concern, I do think. So what has, uh, you know, Salem Wildwood done to help, you know, address that? Well, first of all, you are standard dual air conditioner to really help make this, uh, you know, to help keep up with things in the hot sunny climate. The other thing is all members of the Lodge series, now factory standard, uh, are equipped with what was previously the aftermarket RV airflow system. And if you're not familiar with that, on a 15,000 BTU air conditioner like we have up here, it will basically provide 40% better airflow down into your RV. So you're not making the air conditioners more powerful, you're just allowing them to work better. Because what it does is it elim uh, eliminates a ton of turbulence up in the ductwork and uh, it, it allows that cold air to get routed down into the body cabin of the RV far faster, far more quickly and effectively. Um, as it, you know, so that, that helps certainly. There is a uh, optional radiant barrier package available on these. And we're gonna talk a little bit about dual pane windows when we, uh, we step outside. Dual panes on something like this uh, are gonna add some weight, but on a trailer that's going to be parked all the time, I don't know that that's the world's biggest concern. Uh, they will um, add a chunk of cost, certainly. But again, they've got some benefits, they got some drawbacks, and they're not like these ultra thermal pane windows like I think a lot of people think they are. So real quick, let's, um, I'm gonna park myself over on the sofa over here, because one of the things this thing has is almost a very pseudo residential kind of setup and layout. Now we've got the sunshine blaring in through these windows, which I think is kind of part of the point of it. But uh, you're, you're directly across from that electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster on a very sectional style kind of sofa. It's obviously not truly a sectional, but like this reminds me a lot of uh, really how my parents like lake house is laid out because they have a living room with uh, sofas. They don't have, you know, tables or anything like that, but they have this giant like dining island in their kitchen. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what we're looking at right here. And this is a model that can sit and sleep a lot of people. Like we've got the five stool capacity all around this and, and five people will actually comfortably sit there. It's kind of funny at one of the RV open houses that's like a show for dealers. Um, there were a bunch of us, you know, eating lunch from the food truck all around that thing. And I was actually very impressed. Not to mention, I don't know about you, I tend to eat from the sofa probably more than I should, which is why my couch cushions are crumbelievable. <laughs> now, I have to kick you over to the angle of wide, uh, well, the realm of wide angle lens view so that you can see this because one of the things is all of the windows here in the living room and the power televator, they can all share one switch. So you can choose exactly which windows and exactly which shades or the televator to put up or down uh, individually or simultaneously in any combination you want. And that even includes the giant windows uh, behind the sofa seating area back there. So it's kind of a one switch to rule them all thing. And I just remembered as I'm talking about this, I cracked my hand trying to be a clown on the countertop. I will tell you that countertop was solid. I, I, th I thought I broke a knuckle or a tendon or something. That did not feel good. <laughs> so you've got the televator straight across from the seating when you want it. The, uh, the couch can open up into another sleeper. And obviously you've got some storage going on in there as well, but you also have that floating storage ottoman, some storage under uh, the other section of the pseudo sectional sofa, if you will, as well as some storage um, behind that with a little flip top. Now I do wanna mention, this is prototype number two of the 44 view and overall it's dialed in pretty good. I've noticed a couple little things that I, I asked their team about. Like if you look at that little flip top storage behind the sofa, the edge of it's rough, they, they said, yeah, we know, we're gonna get that finished off properly. For now, we're just doing kind of a, a proof of concept. We wanted easier access to that storage back here and it makes sense to me. Now, if you look on that Harry Potter stairwell wall, you see some household outlets, but I like that they're white and they kind of blend in. You see the same thing poking around the uh, the window treatment over there, which is kind of cool. Um, overall, something else I noticed, I don't know if it's like a, uh, a controller brain issue or what, but I noticed the power window shades here are functioning better and they're not amping out nearly as easily as they were last year. Uh, that's not a problem I saw happen a lot, but I, I have not been able, like last year a couple times, if these shades were coming down and they met any resistance, they would like amp out and, and stop. 
and you would have to like reset everything. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. So it just it just works the way that it should. If it bumps something, it just curls up a little bit until it falls back down. It's no big deal. Now on the back here, um, let's actually go downstairs before we go upstairs. Last year, this was the only bathroom. Well, in the 42 view, it still is. Well, one of the benefits of the 44 view is that it still maintains a big rear bathroom back here, but you've also got a half bath by the, the, the front sleeping sections. Not a whole lot's changed back here, but you might notice to give you extra room in the upper deck, um, it is a, uh, a, a double step down right here. And that was one of the, the industry firsts on this, uh, on the 42 view last year, as I recall, that it was a, uh, a, a double drop frame destination trailer, which I don't think had ever been done before. They've churched up the shower a little bit. It's looking good. You're going to see the headroom in there is also excellent. But one of the more interesting qualities on this is that you do have a, uh, because you have a loft above us, there's not really a good way to ventilate you know, uh, humid air to, to, to have a fart fan in the bathroom. So what they did here is they have this like side mount max air vent fan. And you'll see the same thing in the half bath if you pay attention actually. So both bathrooms do have themselves a pretty good fart fan. And in case you're curious, you do have uh, heat vents uh, down by the floor and you do have a ducted air conditioning vent back here. So you're not like hot boxing yourself, you know, hot pocket is uh Hot pockets are tasty. Hot boxing yourself in a bathroom is not so much. Now, I am aware that hot boxing can mean two different things. Um, I'm, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> I love that lightsaber light above the big mirror right there. And that extra little shelf, also solid surface, just a neat little like place to be able to set out. Well, you know, the first thing I thought of, because I'm a giant child, I'm a Toys R Us kid, is that's where I'd put out the green plastic army men in their battle position. Or what I would do, is I would get some action figures from the Lion King, and I would recreate the scene where Scar is like throwing Mufasa off the uh, off the cliff because that's what I want to see every morning. I I wake up and I'm like, that's it. I'm ready to get hurt again today. <laughs> Let me back up here a little bit, because one of the cool things that they've done here is they've put some surprisingly uh, decent storage, and I like that dedicated linen cabinet, but around the corner, you either have a uh, a, a dedicated like uh, giant closet, or you can get either aftermarket or from the factory, a uh, combo or stackable washer dryer installed in here. So if you are, there have been interest, like I'm in some owner's groups for these, uh, like almost the, the view model specifically, destination trailers. And there are so many people who are like, they're like, I'm, I'm laughing all the way to the bank. They are getting an RV like this out in like Idaho. And then they're building a roof over it. And they're not buying a $350,000 home. You know, they know that this is not built the same as a residential spec, but the fact is it's getting the job done for them, which I think is cool. Now I'm at, I'm, I'm, I'm standing in the doorway. This is a bad angle to showcase this, but the toilet space is amazing. You know, the space around the toilet's incredible. And one of the other cool things is depending on how your campsite is orientated and who is around you, you can leave that window open and maintain eye contact with the neighbor if they have like a front windshield camper or something like that. And that's a good way to establish dominance. Just don't blink, you know, that's that's how you do it, guys. You just, you don't blink, you stay calm, you establish dominance. Another thing here I mentioned, the headroom and the shower is awesome. They've, with that double step down drop frame, uh, they, they've really made it comfortable. I'm a little over six foot tall and I can stand in that thing just fine. But slinking our way back here just a little bit, it's easy to miss, and I almost forgot to talk about it. You do have a central vac system built right into here, but it also has the bottom right thing there. That's what I call the electric dustpan. It's uh, like it's basically its own little mini vac, and you just flick it up with your toe and sweep everything in it, and it sucks it right up. Like, mmm, delicious. <laughs> I don't know why that turned into a borderline Pee Wee Herman uh, voice. But uh, hey, it did. Notice though, we have what I call the, the stairway to heaven to get you up to this revised rear Nerf battle loft. And uh, last year, it was just like two bunk mats on the floor. What they did this year, I'm gonna actually walk my way up here a little bit. Um, first of all, it, the flooring looks a little funny because they actually have padding under here to make this a little more comfortable. But they've revived this a little bit. Uh, instead of just being like a double bunk loft, it's a camp queen bed. Now, one of the first things I wondered is, could I put a true queen in? And because of the, the headroom for the step-down well over here, no, you can't. But the fact is, 
uh, you know, I, I tell you, I, I think a lot of kids or, you know, even adult guests or something like that would, would probably prefer something like this here. And what's neat about this, like, what if you're, I'm just going to throw out like grandpa and grandma, you have a seasonal camping lake site. You can invite your kids and grandkids here all at once because you have the bunks uh, in, in the front. Plus you've got the bedroom in the back and the bedroom in the front, you know. Now over here, you might notice uh, the uh, the entertainment hookup. So if this is going to be an additional little space, you can, uh, you know, keep some folks, uh, you know, um, Amazon Prime and committing through the night. Plus you can, you know, close that off and privatize it. And of course you do have your uh, air vents up here. Now, just to kind of give you a, a little bit of a perspective, you know, there's uh, what, what I look like sitting in that thing right there. And overall, considering the decent thickness of the mattress, I, I thought the headroom wasn't too bad in here. Now, it's not, I, I probably, you know, I'm not gonna do jumping jacks up here, but for a loft sleeper, it did great. But that's the thing. This doesn't have to be just a loft sleeper. If you want to, um, uh, like use it as storage space or, you know, like a little cat paradise or something like that up there that I could see that being a little kitty cat heaven. You know, I could see a lot of different ways that you would utilize a little space like that. And I'd be kind of curious, how would you go about using it? Now, as we pivot our way around here, let's start diving into the kitchen in more detail, because not only is it rearranged a little differently, they've made some improvements and some enhancements here. Um, it's not, I, I want to be clear about this because there are going to be pe people who will do everything they can to mislead you. It's not all hardwood cabinetry. They went to hardwood cabinet doors, which is nice. It's it's not all hardwood cabinetry though. Like the the styles and rails of the cabinets are not all hardwood still. Um, the uh, but but overall the general look and feel of this I think is better. And again, you've got this giant dining island over here. And just to give you an idea, um, let me actually kind of pull these stools out a little bit so you can see the kind of space you have. Like even if you're sitting at this thing. There's still some comfy room to get kind of worked around it, you know, but the new pantry they have in this, um, you can pull it open from either side. You can see how it's got like that pass through capacity. I love it whenever storage comes to you and you don't have to go to storage. That is absolutely unequivocally, um, you know, one of my Mary Poppins favorite things in RVs. The, uh, the, the refrigerator is the same size it was. It does have that handy ice maker in it, though, uh, which is very nice for, you know, being able to come in and have a little drink station. And with the island that you have here, and there are power outlets under that gigantic dining, dining island thing, you can have plenty of, you know, cold drinks and ice on hand. Um, the uh, All the windows, of course, have the blackout shades. But, like, what about your big sliding doors there? Well, you see how it does have that, uh, you know, the big, thick privacy curtains. And um, if you really need to close the sucker off, you can. Now, the sliding door here, that's not optional. These destination trailers, that's just how they are. So if you don't like that, I do apologize. This may not be the correct RV for you. But once again, you have a bunch of sleeping in the front of the RV. And in the 42 view, the only place that you could use the bathroom was about 45 feet away from your front bedroom. And you either had to go upstairs or downstairs, no matter where you were sleeping. You don't have to do that anymore. Instead, you have this handy dandy little half bath right here. Now, in its current form, because again, this is prototype number two. This is not a final production model. Keep in mind, some changes may occur. When I sat down at this, I went, oh boy, it's tight. My right elbow was really struggling. So the idea that I offered up to the, the, the factory designer who walked me through this camper was um, like, I love that this is wide open. This give me the, uh, gave me the leg room, the knee room that I needed down here. So that was really smart. And I said, what if you just cut that back a little bit? Leave a little chunk of counter here, but cut it back a little bit. Um, he seemed open to the idea, but that was my two cents. What do you think about that? Is that a, uh, a good idea, bad idea, and a maniac style? And I really like that extra little shelf right there. Um, with the, the handy hanging towel bar, I hope we see that in more RVs. That is a really cool widget right there, if you ask me. But working our way back over and around, you've now got the Arby's Curly Fry Staircase to Heaven as uh, uh, com compared to the, uh, the other one right there. And it's almost that like floating style step. And I could see maybe, what would you put back here? 
maybe shoes, cat litter box, something like that in that open air space right there. By the way, all of our main cabin lights are on a dimmer switch. Now this is revised a little bit as compared to the 42 view. It still has the, the two bunks back here and that makes sense, that's fine. Although I didn't get those storage cubes put quite back. But the 42 view, they tried to like extend this cushion forward. And because of the level change right here, it was always janky and weird. But again, in those owners groups, a lot of people are using this almost like a gaming entertainment station up here. And you see you've got the hookups, which make it a, uh, a pretty good place to be able to do that. And of, uh, again, these are what I call the Nerf battle loft. Yes, they're open into the living room, but you do have curtains that can close off and privatize all that. I know this is long, guys, but this is a big RV and there's a lot of fun stuff to cover. Moving back here, though, very similar to what we saw in the uh, the rear loft, although I am briefly going to jump you over to the, the realm of wide angle mode. Um, I, I was, again, very happy with the space that I had. And this one gives everybody a little more space and separation. And um, both uh, headboard areas of both bedsides. They both have their own um, household and USB outlets up there. So everything can have, you know, like phone chargers and stuff. But the space you have, the the little belly bucket between the bunks, the bunkhouse belly bucket, I give that absolutely five stars. But you've also got six of those uh, cube organizer storage totes up there. I, I really love those things. I think they're really handy, really flex function uh, kind of objects. They revised this a little bit too. Last year, I can't remember if it was a tiny cabinet or just some cubbies. But what they have now are these um, handy little thatch baskets, kind of like we saw in the, uh, the the rear bathroom. And to uh, give you a little bit better look at the uh, the space that you have in there, if I pop those out, you know, if you just want it to be shelf space, it absolutely can. If you uh, you know w want to use those wicker baskets, I, I love the basket thing. I think I think a lot of factories do a lot of open face storage. And I think that including little widgets like those baskets would be super, super handy. Um, when this first came out last year, I don't recall, I don't think they had the VersaTilt bed like they did last year. And by last year, I mean the 42 view, since obviously the 44 that we're in today is uh, its own unique animal. But the neat thing about this is that it's on a power incliner, you know, headboard bed lift area. The switch is actually over here by the entry door, which kind of miffs some people. Like, why, why can't I reach it from bed? It's not like a, a sleep number orthopedic power lift bed where you can lay in it and adjust your, your head angle and position. It's not that. It, 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 you, you should be off of it while you're uh, lifting it up and down. So they purposely put the switch where you can't really reach it. Now the front bottom section of this kind of feels a little bit vanilla and naked to me, but that's also the area where you're walking around the bed. So uh, I, do, I, I guess I, it makes sense that it's a little bit open. And again, by the way, you do have air conditioning ducting down into here. You know that center console between the bunks and the loft above us? Part of the reason that's there is because they are actually shunting air conditioning down from that RV airflow system into your uh, private front bedroom up here. And whether it's the living room, the bedroom, whatever the case, the window coverage in these is just absolutely amazing and what makes this room look and feel even bigger is that all of the closet space over here is mirrored so you're 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 double reflecting all of that light around so even though you have that like sun blocking loft above us it never feels small or dark in here unless obviously it's the middle of the night <laughs> which you know makes a terrible amount of sense now the this bedroom if we start cracking this open it doesn't have the most storage out of anything that i've seen but it doesn't have the least out of anything that i've ever seen either I, they did what they could where they could although again those blackout window shades if you are camping in super hot sun country those are going to be a uh, a big big benefit for you um i think you may have actually gained a slight amount of bedroom storage as compared to the 42 view, but I could be wrong on that. If nothing else, it's about the same. I do want to mention, you see that electric space heating fireplace over there by the bedroom? Last year in the 42 view, because they had that residential uh, water heater that they no longer have anymore, you had to choose. Do you use the fireplace in the living room or the bedroom? You had to flick a switch. You no longer have to do that. Because they no longer have that residential water heater, they've gained a circuit, basically. So they were able to uh, run both of the electric space heating fireplaces uh, simultaneously, if you are so inclined. And if you're worried about the, um, the proximity factor here, 
Uh, obviously, keep in mind there are certain fire safety codes where they can't put something like this so close that it would be a fire safety hazard. There are some people that really like to have that just warm and toasty feel in bed. I'm the opposite. I like to have a, a fan blowing on me all the time, but that's one of the areas where I like that open space in the front of the RV. I could have a fan sitting right there blowing at me. My wife could have the, uh, the, the, the heater uh, toasting her right there, which is, uh, here's the thing I don't understand. Ladies, gentlemen, can you explain this? I don't understand all the science behind this. My wife can have uh, a heat blanket on her and she can still put her ice freaking cold feet in the middle of my back. W what is that even about? And normally I call it road mode when I close the slides. In this case, I think I'm going to call it destination mode or storage mode uh, is probably the best way to describe it. And the thing is with a destination trailer, they're not made for mobile intentions. So yeah, when the slide is closed, you are flat losing access to the refrigerator. Although one of the things that is kind of neat because it does have dual entry doors, or if you have Paul Bunyan legs like mine, you can just step over the sofa, but you can always get to that rear loft sleeper. You can always get to that full rear bathroom uh, if need be. Similarly, we can also get to the front loft and front bedroom, although we'll see the bedroom slide will probably block some of the storage. The half bath is obviously lost as well. But again, these are made for being there and being set up, not, not like making stops and getting there. But sometimes, you know, when you're doing your seasonal setup or teardown, it is kind of nice to have some uh, extra little abilities and function. Um, and overall, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. You're going to lose probably about two thirds of your bedroom closet space over here. You're gonna maintain that one uh, closet and dresser drawer. Yeah, I don't know what benefit that's gonna provide you, but I wanted to take the time to close it up. And if you appreciate me showing the road mode stuff, maybe, I don't know, click the like button on the video or, or don't, I can't tell you what to do. And remember, if you like these view concepts, these like maximized campsite window coverage concepts, the Salem and Wildwood divisions have them all the way down from like uh, 20 foot single axles up to these giant 45 foot destination trailers and even some laminated and fifth wheel models uh, coming out as well. So this is an extremely robust lineup, but the thing is the view is not a series, you know? Uh, they just, it, it, it's kind of a, um, it's kind of, a feature set that exists within multiple series of Salem's and Wildwoods. Now, taking a look at the weights and measures there, um, you know, it's it's big, it's heavy. It's the kind of thing, if you are going to tow it to the destination, you're going to need a good size vehicle to do it. But I think it's really worth noting, this is not the kind of RV made with the intention of towing around all the time. There's things that are far better suited for that. This is something designed to get there, park there, and stay there. And that opens up some interesting opportunities. There's a lot of people that that look at something like this who don't have a tow vehicle, which sounds a little bit wacky at first glance, but the thing is, um, there's a lot of people who will just get like a, a, a seasonal or park site and they will just leave the RV there for a while and uh, basically have somebody deliver it to the campground for them. And we can certainly help arrange for stuff like that. Uh, now, I don't even know where to begin, so I'm just gonna start by, just, just start hitting things right here. They have this like elevated like serving tray, but it's like, over it's like six and a half foot in the air so you're looking at it like what good is that thing the thing is with no campsite slides this is ultra ultra park friendly and the way that a lot of people will use destination trailers is they will actually build a deck onto their campsite and basically elevate the ground level uh up closer to the the door level of the rv that's why this does not use any sort of like more ride or lipper stable step they use the traditional fold in out steps so that it is maximally park friendly with no campsite slides but you've got like a monster 26 foot awning on this thing but here's a little cautionary thing i've learned over the years when you have an awning this big and it is an auto rain dump awning you want to make sure you you like tilt and drop either one or none of the awning arms if it is a little bit of a drizzly day if you drop them both down the darn thing is so big it can actually pool a little bit of water behind the tube uh, that doesn't have a, a chance to run off and when water's 8.3 pounds per gallon it adds a lot of weight and you could actually damage the awning leaving it out my best recommendation anytime it's raining is just put the awning away and maybe tuck away inside because you have an amazing uh view <laughs> of things now down here last year the 42 view it rode on dual 7K axles. 
the 44 view, uh, by the time, you know, you can add things like, you know, uh, fiberglass washer dryer, you can add some weight to it. They wanted to make sure that nothing was going to get overloaded. So it's now equipped with triple 6K axles. Uh, so the, uh, the total like beefiness of it has gone up uh, by about 4,000 pounds. Now this is very interesting. Um, it's, a, it's a double drop frame, a front and a rear drop frame. The interesting part is that those manual stabilizer jacks we're looking at are actually an optional item. And that sounds weird that those would be optional, but again, destination park models are used differently. Um, and a lot of people will get like, you know, uh, basically like cinder blocks, concrete blocks and, and, and block everything up for you. Um, now, the um, I, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. Sorry, my brain kind of went on pause right there. You have an amazing, insane amount of window coverage. And in hot climates, you know, there's a very reasonable concern that you're going to have a hard time keeping the RV cool and comfortable. Or in cold climates, are you going to be able to keep the thing warm? First of all, you know, this is not necessarily like they're not pretending to be some like Arctic Four Seasons package or anything like that. They do have uh, a, a couple things that you can do to this, though. I guess you'd call it a hidden option, and uh, but but the fact is they do offer uh, dual pane windows on these. The thing is, uh, if you've seen my videos on this topic, dual pane windows don't significantly increase our values. They will add weight. They will add money. Where dual pane windows are awesome is they are supremely noise canceling. So if what you're looking for is a quieter experience at your RV site, you might want to to ask about the dual pane option. If what you're looking for is the best insulation package possible, uh, you should be doing things like pulling your shades down and maybe adding reflectics to the windows. And if you're gonna be cold camping, you need to run a dehumidifier in your RV. So there's some pro tips for you. Slide awnings are another available option. The one we're looking at today basically has all of the things added to it, uh, which is uh, kind of fun, kind of cool. The one major downfall that like every destination trailer has is they have basically jack and squat in terms of outside storage capacity um this is a chunk of space under that uh the the front bed obviously the you know the drop frame front bedroom so you do at least have something out here but that is literally your only source of outside uh storage on on one of these it just it just kind of is what it is now a little point of clarity here for you a lot of times when people see fiberglass i hear the phrase laminated laminate and <clears throat> The fiberglass skin is laminated to a dual-leaved offset Luan backer, but the actual RV is still stick-built, and that kind of throws a lot of people off. The other thing is, are you noticing the reflectivity of this sucker? Like, the reason that I'm over here on the, the shaded side of the RV is because if the sun reflected off my forehead and then reflected off that skin and then off my forehead again and created a feedback loop, we may actually create an Einsteinian wormhole through space, space and time. time. And if I learned anything by watching Doc Brown and Marty in Back to the Future, that is not something you want to be messing with. Now, I like to share the good with the bad in my videos. And this is um, this is one of the only real things I look at this RV and go, man, that's tough. Because there really is not any way around it. Since the whole side of this RV is slides, that uh, the sewer outlet's right there buried under that slide. There's just not a whole way around it. Now, folks with on-site sewer may be able to better manage and, and navigate that, but that's just how this one kind of has to be. And this would be for the back bathroom uh, back here. So this is a two-headed sewer monster. Now, up top here, uh, last year, these had two different uh, tank heater, uh, water heater options. You had like a six gallon or 10 gallon gas electric, and then you had a 20 gallon residential electric. Those are both gone. They've gone to a 60,000 BTU on-demand water heater, and that is the only thing that they're doing for water heating now. And I think, personally, it makes a ton of sense on a trailer like this that is not intended for any sort of boondock use. That is a loud train horn. How you doing there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Canadian Pacific Railroad. Anyway. Thank you. Uh, a special thanks to our guest Thomas the, Thomas the Tank Engine for joining us today. But what I was getting at is uh, the on-demand water heater to me makes tons of sense on this thing because you know you're, you're going to be in one spot all the time, and y you might have like somebody using the kitchen, somebody using the shower all at the same time. So having that uh, you know ability to do both of those with the larger 60,000 BTU heater makes a lot of sense to me. Now speaking of some of those things. Um, 
This RV has an enclosed and forced air heated underbelly. One of the things that they offer there, the name is uh, a little aggressive. I think it's called their extreme weather package. All it is, is a layer of radiant foil wrapped across the roof and through the belly. And don't get me wrong, that stuff can be very, very helpful, but just a layer of foil alone won't magically make or break uh, like a, a, a weathering package on this sucker. It will just really enhance um, comfort, uh, what do I wanna say, like consistency. And I got a question for you too. You know, these things are big. They're, you know, they're the size, they're the height of a fifth wheel. In terms of cubic foot of space, this is bigger than a fifth wheel. But weirdly, destination trailers almost never come with a ladder. Do you think they should or do you think they shouldn't? It's, it's kind of funny. I've got to walk like a football field away from this thing to get it in the frame in the back the background here because it's it's big. But the thing is, this isn't something really intended for a lot of towing. Like you could look at uh, like the rear drop frame and say, man, I feel like I'm going to scrape that around when I drag. It's not made for towing. It's made for parking and staying there and just having a Bill and Ted excellent time on this sucker right here. Uh, just there, you can see how the, the, the Wildwood Lodge family they are just truly specialists at this destination market. And there's some other builders that make some neat destination models, but they build them every now and then. One of the more interesting things on this family and this group right here is that they're the only destination trailer builder that has year round full-time production. The people building these only build these. They don't build these and. It's like if you watch the movie 300 and he asks the, uh, I think the Athenians what their profession is. And one guy's a blacksmith and one guy's a potter. And then you ask the Spartans, their profession, who, who, this is their profession. That's what they do. And I think I just blew uh, a gasket right there. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you links in the video description to check pricing and availability, as well as if you wanna see the 42 view, and if you wanna see some other Lodge destination models. I've got a pretty decent collection of them going now, so take a look there and let me know what you think about this new one. And remember, when you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden fees, we just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun and enjoy the view, everyone. That was so corny.